Hello. How are you? How's your day going thus far? I must admit, I have some anxiety going on today. I'm uh, not a big fan of checks because half the time people don't deposit them in an efficient time frame. And if you get in a situation where you are sort of using funds to cover one thing until you can deposit more, it can become a little bit of a nightmare. The uh, logistics of it is people just, for some reason people hold on to checks for for extended periods of time sometimes. I had them hold on to checks for two months before they even tried to deposit them before. And unfortunately, it's not something you can go back and sort of say, okay, give me the check back and I'll pay you with cash or a card because they say, oh, we've already sent it to corporate. You have to contact corporate. They will handle that. Sorry, it went off center there. <laughs> so that's a little obnoxious to me. I've been looking at video of myself from the past and looking at these videos and noticing how much I've changed, not only in weight, but there's some positives and then there are some things that are challenging. Um, I definitely think I've become more comfortable on camera because it's just not something where I feel like I have to perform. <laughs> I feel like I'm just conversational. And I've always really done that in acting, but from a perspective of just talking into a camera, sometimes it's, sometimes it's been a little challenging. You'll also notice sometimes I will sort of overemphasize the ways I say something like, because, or um, after, or something like that. It's one of the things I use to try and avoid um, picking up the twang from the region of the country where I live. Because you'll notice that um, many Texans don't use the word for, they use the word fur. And that's not particularly a habit I want to pick up. I would rather be born neutral so that uh, I could sort of transition from one to the other as needed. And so I try to avoid picking up Southern dialects in general, not because I have a problem with them, but um, because I would rather be more neutral and I can transition and play someone from from pretty much anywhere in the country. So that may be why you hear me overemphasize words so I can make sure I pick up the consonants or the vowels. I don't do it like consistently, like talking like this, so you can hear every letter and syllable and consonant and vowel. <laughs> but I do use that technique on certain words. I've had people in the past say they thought I was from Michigan or something. <laughs> um, I'm not entirely sure why, but. I've had people say I sound like Matt Dillon a little bit. I uh, don't know about that one either. Um, so, it's kind of something I've been watching. I've been watching some videos by actors on a channel on YouTube. 
called Actor's Life. And uh, I actually find it relatively interesting because actors are a unique brand, a unique flavor. We all start out with this excitement and energy. But when it's not your bread and butter, it's not what you go to work and how you make your money, it's so much easier to sort of pause. And even just making this video this morning, I've been making quite a bit of, uh, spending quite a bit of this evening uh, watching video. But it was because of a couple of reasons. Uh, among them was I was waiting for my phone to charge. <laughs> but even as I was noticing, my phone only has about a 40% battery power right now. I should make it through this video, but my point is, is that as a result of doing that, I ended up spending time watching videos and I got closer to the end and I said, well, you know, it's getting kind of early in the morning. I'm stressing about these checks that I need to make sure go through. They don't bounce, da da da. And then I was giving myself a number of reasons not to make the video. In other words, offering myself a number of excuses. Well, it's because of this and that. Now, let me say that I do not guarantee that every day I will make a video. Sometimes that's just not possible because life has its own remedy or remedy um, recipe. And it just happens as it happens sometimes. Your day gets filled with this and that. I will always try to push through my excuses that I make in this situation so that I can make videos. There's excuses that are, for example, I'm too tired. Well, do you go to work if you're tired? If you want to get paid, you go to work, yes. And you may drag, but you go because that's how you pay your bills. Same thing applies to a business you're trying to get into. So acting, for example, you're like, you easily make the excuse of, well, I had a long day at work. I'm really not up to making a video. Well, if you're using those videos as the basis to further develop your business as an actor, then you're essentially saying, I don't want to get paid. Because I'm not able to commit the time. So, there's all kinds of excuses you can make, especially when it's not bringing you money in immediately. But if you want to succeed in anything, because acting is very much like any small business, you have to invest the time. And even this, I don't know that this will ever make any money off of it, nor do I really care that much. I would love it if it created a pattern where people could see that I'm consistent in making videos, that if someone saw it and said, oh, that guy can make presentations, he can make presentations. So it's just developing, for me, it's developing the things I mentioned to you yesterday or a couple of days ago. Well, when it comes to any business, Acting is just one example, it's just my example and other individuals' examples. You have to commit the time to it. And you have to push past excuses that are easily made in order not to, to not do things so that you can accomplish them. It's just so easy to do that though. It's so easy to find a way out and to talk yourself out of something. So, 
the reason I sort of, sort of on that tangent, that road, where the hell did it turn? Uh, was because I was watching a YouTube channel called Actor Life, hashtag Actor Life. And they made probably, I don't know, 14 or 18 videos, somewhere in that neighborhood. But the last video that they posted was about 10 months ago. And just like every actor, I'm sure these two ladies who did it, called uh, named Caitlin and Laura, that they started with the best of intentions. And apparently they're doing something, because I looked them up on YouTube, I found their names, looked them up on uh, IMDb, and they've both gone through the process of posting pictures of themselves and really putting themselves out there, and that's great. IMDb is not necessarily a way to become famous, but it's sort of, well, in a way, in some people's perspective, it legitimizes you. <clears throat> I think working legitimizes you, but <laughs> uh, so they haven't made a video on their channel in 10 months, or at least posted one. And that's what I'm talking about. In a way, it was an inspiration for me, for me to get here and to get on this treadmill and make this video and talk with you because I need to stay consistent. When I first did the cardio vlogs, I want to say when I was living in Conroe, Texas, I did them pretty consistently. Maybe did 30 or 40 episodes before I sort of waned. I can't remember honestly. I'd be lying if I told you I remember exactly. But I faded off and I picked it back up and did another few episodes for a season two, so to speak, and then did maybe one or two episodes of season three, and then I picked up a few days ago to kickstart what I'm calling season four, and the reason I'm calling them by seasons versus when there's only one or two episodes in a season is because it's when I pick it up, and if it's been a period of time since I released something, I feel the need to create a fresh road for it. So that's why this is called season four. <clears throat> Anyways, I was leading to, I think that as actors, the people who are just starting any business in general, let's leave acting behind. Let's just talk about business in general. If you wanna be an entrepreneur, you have to commit time that other people would not generally commit in their nine to five. So, when you work in a, for someone, you go to work, you get your dollars, they pay your, they pay you, deduct all the necessary fees associated to taxes and whatever else. You go home and pay your check. You get your check twice or once a month and you're done. When you're trying to start your own business and succeed at something, you have to push much longer hours and you have to spend more time thinking about what you're going to pull off. You have to think of more approaches to solve challenges, the whole thing. And it is not for everyone. The reason I say it, I think it's a good opportunity for people to try and start their own business because then they discover whether something is a, an appropriate business for them to do or an appropriate method for them to approach life or not. So some people are leaders and some people are team members. There is no one better or worse on either side of that coin. Leaders are part of a team, but they take a level of responsibility that team members don't necessarily have to aspire to. 
team members follow instructions. Uh, they actively participate in problem solving to try and accomplish a goal. But at the end of the day, the do or die of it falls in the hands of the leader. So if we have an example of manager at a fast food store, restaurant, whatever you want to call it, they start, they're the shift manager. They go in, start the shift, make sure their team is active in their roles, doing what they have to get done to satisfy customer satisfaction, satisfy quotas, whatever it may be. Keep costs low, prevent damage or loss, whatever it is. But when the, uh, let's say the general manager, which is generally what's called someone who sort of runs the store or oversees the, op the entire operation, comes in, if they see a shift that's got problems that's weak, they could go team member by team member, but what they're also going to look at, most importantly, is the leader of that shift, the, the shift manager. Are they appropriately handling their position? So some people want to be shift manager, other people want to be members of the team, pull off their tasks, accomplish their goals that are set for them specifically, and then call it a day. They want the stress-free aspect of work. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just as wonderful, a just as important a contribution as a leader. But there's not the investment of risk. Because a shift manager, if things don't work out, can be demoted and lose their pay bonuses or uh, extra benefits, they could be fired. So there's a risk level to it. I remember talking to someone one day at a bank, and they'd been working there for like five years, I believe. And I said, so you've never really wanted to do the manager thing? And this person, happened to be a man at the time, said, no, 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 I don't want to be a manager. There's too much stress with that. I'm happy doing what I'm doing, I do my job, I know how to do it, I do it well, I get it done, I'm consistent, and that's all I need. And then I can go home, play video games, spend time with my kids, spend time with my friends. I don't have to stress out about stuff that managers have to stress out about. And see, that's the difference between being a leader and being a team member because leaders have an element of risk added to their job, especially if you're financially on the line for it. Because then you have to say, and I'm learning this stuff even as I go, even as I go along. It's not something I just started, just went, okay, I know everything. And good God, I'm probably never gonna know I'm sure I'll never know everything. But there's an element of risk, and you learn from it. Um, and you have to be willing to do that. And so this segues back into acting on my side of it, because if you don't invest the time, even when you're tired, to get something done, then it will go day after day and eventually never be resolved. And it becomes a very easy process of Excuse me. Sorry about that. It becomes a very easy process of never happening. A very easy possible, very likely possibility that it will never happen. But there's nothing wrong with being. I want people to understand that there's just as much significance to being a team player and getting it done as there is to being an entrepreneur. It's just or a leader, it's just a different, a matter of risk to certain degrees. 
and within acting, don't feel like acting has to be your bread and butter. That's sort of what this was boiling down to. Or filmmaking has to be your bread and butter. There are going to be those of us that want to be professionals, and we have to work every day and work that much harder if we want to succeed in it. And then there are those who love to go to auditions. If they get a part, great. They can be a part of a team, have fun on stage, play, do the best they can. And maybe it'll turn into a profession just by happenstance, because that does happen. Or it will just always remain a happy hobby, a passionate hobby for them. Directors have a lot to gain and lose when they're, and actors do too, actors in, that are trying to pursue a professional career have a lot to lose if they go into a production and they don't put all their effort into character development, uh, execution of their role, the whole thing. Directors have a lot to lose because if the show's not successful, it gets bad reviews or whatever else, they have bad relationships, they look poorly organized, they don't look prepared, they may never get to work again. So, decide what's, what you, which part of the team you wanna be. Do you wanna be a part of the, of the wheel, you know, making a turn or a spoke on the wheel, making sure that the bike keeps moving, or do you want to be the axis? By which if you don't, if your part doesn't work, then the entire wheel is pointless because it doesn't ever accomplish anything without the axis. The axle axis is a point. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for being here with me. I'm hopefully talking to people out there, but at the moment I'm talking to my phone. Thank you, phone. And uh, really have a wonderful day. Be happy in your life, no matter what you are, you're important. Just choose the thing that you want to spend your effort on. Take care and be well.